G'day legends and welcome back to another video and we are rebuilding my AutoArt Lamborghini to Ablo GTR broken rear axle but the legend Sean B Casey has sent me one to Austria. I'll tell you more about that in a tick but stick around and let's see if we can get this thing finally going around my track. So welcome back to another video and yes we are rebuilding my Lamborghini Diablo GTR 132 scale auto art. Now I know a lot of people can't stand the auto art slot car brand. I for one do miss them. I love the finish of the bodies. They look like model cars because I do collect model cars. But I have to be honest, they don't perform the greatest. But for me as a collector, these are no-brainers. I'll love to have the full set, which I will try and do in the future. But if you do remember correctly, in my first video, this did turn up with a broken rear wheel. So the wheel was snapped off the axle. This is old, they are fragile. Of course, they didn't use the best parts or pieces back then. And I thought this was a dead and gone slot car. The seller was a champion, gave me a, a nice discount and let me keep it so I can try and rebuild it in the future. But the biggest legend of all is Sean B. Casey. Now he reached out to me on Facebook uh, Messenger out of the blue and he said, Trav, a replacement rear axle is coming your way. Now, let me start off by saying thank you, mate. I, I'm speechless because not only did he go on eBay or wherever you purchased it from, he purchased it, it was sent to him and then he sent it to me free of charge. So again, I'm speechless. Thank you very much. And to everyone else who've sent me stuff for the channel for reviews, I really do appreciate it. And of course, the companies. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. This really does mean a lot. I haven't physically met all of you, but talking to the majority of you on Facebook or emails or even on Instagram, there's a lot of legends in our hobby. So thank you very much. And I hope this goes in without any hassles, but you're an absolute legend, Sean B. Casey. So let's get stuck into it. Let's unbox it. I'm gonna fix it first because I don't want to show you what the car's like with a broken axle. So we'll zoom on in, we'll go down to the, the bench. I'll take the rear one out. Hopefully I don't do any more damage. And this being just as old, I hope I don't damage this one. We'll put it in, we'll have a good look at the car. I'll set up a little Carrera track and we'll take it for a spin, fingers crossed. So let's get stuck into the rebuild. Now this is only a small job, it's only a rear axle. So of course you're gonna need your rear axle for the job that fits the car. There's my broken rim, as you can see, it snapped off at the rim itself, and that's still connected to the shaft. Screwdriver, which this only takes four screws to take apart. Now, having running lights, once you take it apart and be very gentle, you are gonna have to disconnect the lights. Just be gentle pulling those apart because you don't want to strip the wires. Now, I'll move this out of the way, but we'll have a close look at that soon. It's a stunning shell. I really do like the auto art shells, but here is the problem child, as you can see, it has clearly snapped off. Now, let's zoom on in, we'll have a closer look at the rear axle. The meshing on this isn't the greatest, the gear meshing, so I'll try and fix that as well, but they weren't the greatest product when it first came out, and we'll put the new axle in. So let's zoom on in and get this done. So the first thing I did was make sure the axle is the correct one, and as you can see, it lines up perfectly. I make sure the the gearing teeth are facing the right way, so when I take it out, I can retrofit it back in. The only thing you would have to do is take off these extremely hard tyres from the original rims because they have to go on the new axle. As you can see, they don't come with tyres, so I'll take those off. But first, let's see if these fit on nicely. This is one of the tyres. Now, I'm going to be gentle here because I don't want to break the plastic that's already on. Ooh, I see. It's so brittle, this plastic. It's actually quite scary. Now, I think the weak point is definitely in here, and if you put too much pressure, these are just gonna snap, so fingers crossed. So let's get out the rear axle. I wanna take the tire off once the axle is off, put it on the axle, put it back in the car, and we'll see if we can remesh it a little bit better. So a quick update on the rear axle. Now off camera, I was just seeing exactly how hard it was going to be to take the axle out because I know the plastic is brittle. And unfortunately, the worst case scenario has happened, which is confirmed, this car is a brittle car. Now, you're probably thinking that I've snapped another wheel off, but unfortunately, we have snapped the whole end off without any force whatsoever. I was literally lifting off the rear axle that one came off okay. You did hear a little bit of a cracking noise, which I wasn't happy about. And then as I literally touched this one to lift up, it snapped the rear end off, which I will glue back on. It's a shame. I knew this would probably happen. Yes, we've still got the new axle. This is going in, but I will use my Dremel gas 
This is normally a soldering iron, but it's got other parts and pieces. So I'll use this as a heat gun, just to heat up that section here to pry it off. And hopefully I don't do any more damage we will refit the new axle on. I will glue this back on because it is going to be a shelf queen. I want to do it enough so we can get around the track, but I knew this would happen. Uh, these are very brutal. So just a warning at home, if you are buying any auto art cars, that doesn't matter how gentle you are, they will potentially snap. So let's see if I can now do proper surgery on this poor car. So I've made a trip to my local hardware and they did have Aerodite and some other kinds of glue, but I'm gonna try this UHU or Uhu glue, which is a little bit flexible. Now that I know that this plastic is brittle, I'll be using a flexible glue just to give it a bit of, of course, flex so it doesn't snap again. I'm gonna apply it with a toothpick style uh, instead of putting big dabs on, which of course, underneath the car, you're not gonna want any big dabs that will be dragging along the track itself. So the first part I'll glue from the top, then we'll smear it with this to make it nice and flat. And then if I need to, I'll do a light sanding to get rid of any high spots. Then I'll flip it over, fill it again to backfill the cracks because there will be cracks from underneath. And then hopefully again, I can sand off any high spots, smooth it out to make sure there's some clearance on the road. So I won't do this on camera, that'd be quite boring to watch, but I am using a flexible glue and let's see what results I get by gluing this back on. I know it's not the ideal outcome. I only need to get this to go around the track two or three times and then it can sit on the shelf, but I do want to fit the rear axle. So let's glue it together and hope I don't break anything else. So I've completed gluing the rear of the chassis itself. And as you can see, it is quite flat. So I'm not going to even risk sanding that. So I've glued both sides, front and rear. Now with this meshing and you will hear it, there is a bit of a step in one of the tooth. So I'm not gonna try and push back the pinion. I don't wanna risk breaking anything else. This motor housing is held in to the chassis. And I reckon if I even try and do something with the motor itself and the pinion and put any pressure, I'll probably end up snapping the motor out. So that's gonna stay like this. It will bite a little bit when we give it a test run, but I think it's okay. Now, one thing I did do before I glue the rear on, I actually put the axle in place clip them in, put as much force as I can so I don't re-snap anything, then held it and then glued it back to where it should be. So hopefully this holds it together for some test runs. I'll plug it all back in. It sat out in the sun because today is an absolutely stunning day. So the glue should be dried enough. There is a little bit of flex in it so it doesn't snap on the first sort of takeoff. But let's see if we get this thing around my track. So the time has come to test to see if the auto art will stay together around the test track. Now, unfortunately, everything that could have went wrong with this build or rebuild did go wrong. The original tires, when I was taking them off, the original axle, the last rim snapped off. The plastic is that brittle, it's not funny. Of course, taking the original axle out broke the rear of the chassis off the car completely. So I hope the glue job is good enough to get some test laps because this will stay on my shelf from now on. But what's really exciting is I've got a decent sized layout set up in the new room. And again, sorry for the audio. I am using Carrera standard R1s and standard straights. So I'm limited on what I can design, but it has given me some great ideas for new storage ideas, which I'll talk about in the future to give me all the floor space. So let's have a quick look at the track, chuck the Dablo on and fingers crossed, it doesn't break in half. So let's quickly take a look at the test track. Now I've tried to use all the track that I do have from two sets, the Mario Kart set and the Red Bull Carrera set. And I think we've got a decent sized track to test to see how this uh, Lamborghini holds together. But what's really exciting is I do have a lot more space than I thought in this room. Of course, I'm not using that back corner, all the shelving still in the way. So I do have some ideas how to remove this and I can use the whole floor space. So let's chuck the Diablo on the track and let's see if this thing stays together. So the time has come, let's see if this thing gets around the track. I don't think it will.
I give up. So I know when to give up and today I am giving up on the AutoArt Lamborghini de Ablo GTR. This is to be continued video. I will get this thing going eventually. I think I might even make it into a, a Frankenstein car and make it actually go really well instead of being a shelf queen. But for now, it'll go back on my shelf. Massive thank you to Sean B. Casey who did send me the rear axle, which, which worked. It spun and unfortunately we got no traction. We did run into two issues. The first issue was the plastics that are used for this car. Now, here are my two guesses. The first one's quite easy. It's an old car. It could have got brittle, sat on the windowsill, or it's just brittle in general, the way it's been built. Of course, any kind of force, which me taking the original axle off snapped it, which that should not happen. With today's car, it definitely would not happen. Two, maybe they're using the same plastics, be it auto art, a die cast car maker. Maybe they use the same kind of plastics that they did with the interior for die cast cars or molding for the die cast cars. Static is great, but once the car gets moving, you need some durability in the plastics, but that's just my two guesses, of course. But we did learn two things. I can fit a decent sized track, which has given me new storage ideas, which I'll talk about in the future. Two, don't waste your money, let me waste mine. But in all, honesty, in all honesty, I will be collecting the rest of these. Just don't expect them to go very well. The second issue I ran into was the pinion. The meshing on the pinion originally was very bitey, meaning it did not want to really work very well. So it would have been a rough ride. And I expected it to actually bite really hard when we took off. But it actually the opposite happened. The pinion was that loose on the original shaft, which has got some etching on it for grip. If you're a Scalatric collector, you'll, you'll be very used to these moving up and down and trying to fix them. You can, if you really want to, glue them back on or do something crazy. I wouldn't do that, but once they move, they pretty much always move. So unless you upgrade them to a lock, lock nut style uh, pinion, it's better just to either put a new one on, which is nice and tight, and leave it on. But once they move, they move. So unfortunately for today, she ain't moving, but we will come back to it. Let's Frankenstein this car. Huge thank you to Sean B. Casey for the rear axle. As always, at that slot go on Instagram and YouTube. Apologies, we didn't get there in the end. It was a 50-50 video. If this is the kind of content you like, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to do as much regular content as I can, but be safe, take care, support your local. Ciao.